Welcome to the back room. Today I'm going to be doing another video on Mindustry schematics, specifically the silicon schematics. You can find these schematics at MindustrySchematics.com and uh, I guess we'll go ahead and just jump right into it. If you want to see this, my scaling rules, go ahead and check out my graphite video. I go over them in that video. But we'll go ahead and minimize that and jump right into this first one here. And now silicon is a very important resource. You use it for a lot of the things, especially all of your units that you make. So you need to make sure you have a really good way to make silicon. This first one is called whatever that is. I have no idea what that what language that is, so sorry, but I assume it means silicon. Uh, this is one of the first sk silicon schematics you will use. It uses just a generic conveyor belt, passes it into these junctions and routers and passes each resource to where it needs to go. Uh, it's a great schematic for early game. Uh, it's not going to work great for the late game. I mean, you can upgrade these to titanium conveyor belts. However, uh, it won't feed all five of these is the problem. Uh, I'm sure you can you can feed additional resources in the top here to be able to uh, assist these two conveyor belts feeding these four. Um, there's also no uh, node indicating that this needs power. And if you did a large node, you should be able to reach all five five of these, but if you have a small node, you're not going to be able to reach that fourth one. So I don't think this is terribly useful. Um, late game, definitely not. I'm going to go ahead and give it a C just to start us off. It's not one, it's one that I would use, but not necessarily as big as it is. Okay. Okay. Moving on to the next one, we have a silicon crucible. So you might notice that these are not specifically in order for the gameplay. I'm, I mix in the crucible as well as the regular silicon. In this one, we're taking um, your vaults and you just put the resources in the vaults. The vaults should pass the resources back and forth and keep a constant number for each of these in uh, each of them. I, I Because these, these unloaders are not specific to a given resource, I think eventually you're going to get more of the, I think it's the lead. You'll get more lead or, or, or coal than you, you know, or, because you're going to be unloading all of the sand and this eventually will clog. So I don't think this is a great uh, long-term solution. You probably want to have resources going into each uh, each of these and you probably wouldn't want to scale them this way. So if I just analyze it from one column of this and you say you put the sand, lead, and coal into one of these vaults, and this probably this is not actually that bad of an option. You can pull down your resources. Um, you could put these side by side. They just wouldn't, they wouldn't share resources. Um, so I think this one as is written, I'm probably going to have to give it an F. I wouldn't use it. It's a little too complicated, and these unloaders, I think, will eventually jam. Uh, granted, I haven't tested this, but I've, I've played with unloaders when you have two vaults next to each other, and it wasn't really that consistent. Reclaiming memory. So moving on. All right, so here's your stackable silicon. You might recognize this as very similar to this first one we saw. However, this one only has two in it, and it's got its power node, uh, you could put two of these stacked vertically. So if you flip this uh, ver uh, vertically, you can feed four at once, and I think that would work. Uh, if you put two on the side, you're probably going to end up with um, the last one not getting serviced all the way. Uh, I think this is not a bad one. I'll go ahead and give it a B. It's one. It's better than this other one because it doesn't have as many uh, silicon uh, smelters. And it has its power node and a battery. So I, I like this one a little bit better. I'd probably use this one rather than this larger one so I'm not wasting so many resources. Okay. Moving on to the next one, we have this silicon scheme. Uh, scheme. This one is good because it's got six silicon factories. Um, you'd put in your resources at the top and the bottom. It looks like it's looking for your... Uh, well, it's taking coal, or sorry, it's taking silicon out the middle and it goes off to the right. And then you pass in your resources on these bridges. It's, it's expecting, it looks like any resource, you could go into each of these. Um, you're going to need to pass in probably coal on one of the, either the bridges and sand on the other bridge, uh, on the conveyor belts here. No, that's not right. Looking at this, you're going to have to pass in, it's only letting silicon flow in here. So you're going to have to have a resource come in, flow down, and because of these, these, yeah, actually, you know, this is a little bit more confusing as I look at this. I, I assume it works, but it's not readily available what, it, what you need to feed where. I, I assume you're going to have to send coal on one of these and sand on the other. So probably coal on this one here, 
in sand on these other ones. But it is a little confusing. You're, you're supposed to have one coal to two sand, and it's not readily available, readily visible what you're supposed to put where and in what ratios. So because of that, I'm going to probably give it a C. I, I don't think I would ever use this one. It probably works, but it's a little confusing trying to figure out what it does if you need to repair it. Um, granted, once you know it, it should work fine. But for a new person trying to pick this up, I, I still probably wouldn't use it. It's a little bigger than I, I'm happy with. Okay, moving on to the next one. All right, so this one is the Silicon Horizontal. So this one was one I played with for many times. I, I played with lots of different designs, and I finally came up with this one as my favorite. The bias is strong with this one. Um, and you might look at it and be like, okay, I mean, it's similar to what other people have. You pass in coal, lead at the top, and sand. What's interesting about this sand one is you, it will, because I used a bridge, it allows you to not have to use plastanium. Um, granted, you'll need plastanium for this crucible here, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But it does pass sand to the left and the right. And so what you can do is you can actually you can put these together in series like this. Okay, So you put them side by side. And you can put your resources in the top. And it will spit out all of your silicon out the bottom. Um, I've ch tested this with a full load of coal, full load of a full conveyor belt of lead, and a full conveyor belt of sand. And you can run two of these with just those two inputs. Now, if you want to have three of them, you're going to need at least another thing of sand and possibly one more conveyor belt of coal. Uh, but it is really nice to put three of these in a row. You get a full plastanium conveyor belt full um, of silicon. So, not a full, uh, sorry, you can get two of these will do one conveyor belt full of silicon. If you do three, you, you want a plastanium conveyor belt to, to take this away. Um, really convenient, uses very little space and produces quite a bit of silicon. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and give it superior because I think it works really good. And I'm not saying this because this is my, the one I use. I've used it a lot, and it's really easy to stack or to stretch to the right or left. You can put lots of resources into it, and it, it's just it's very compact, right? So moving on. All right, here we have another one. It's called Silicon Crucible. This one looks like it should be able to be stacked um, vertically however it takes sand in the top and lead and uh, coal in the right so it's compact i will give you that however uh, it does you can't stack this because the sand is going to get in your way here um, if you if you do stack it you could stack it with two of them and then have the sand unloaded from the one below it by this unloader so it'll pull from there and share it to the left so you could stack it you just wouldn't be able to feed any more additional sand in there, which is a weakness of this design. If they had changed this um, bear belt on the left or on the right here, so that it would feed in and put the sand in there, that probably would have been better. Um, so it's good. Probably give it a B. Um, not the best one, but it does use plastinium conveyor belts to unload. I don't know why there's a random wall right here. That just is a waste of plastinium. Um, so we'll give it a B. All right, next one here, we have the Silicon Crucible V4. So this one, you put, take in your resources at the bottom. You can pass in your, your lead, your sand, and your coal there. You have more lead, or sorry, more sand and coal here. Um, you then cross the bridges here and there. Uh, there's a bunch of solar panels, small solar panels to fill in the space. I don't mind that. I think it's good to have solar panels around just to fill in the space. So, you know, otherwise, you're just wasting it. And this can provide a little bit of power. I don't think this is enough power to charge all of this or run all of this, but it, you know, fills it in. There, the downside to that is that if you don't have enough silicon, this is a waste of silicon. Uh, so there's that. Um, this gives you two uh, silicon crucible generators here, which is nice. Um, it, you can't stack it very well, and they're using this uh, launch. Uh, what are these things called? I rarely use them because they're kind of annoying. But this this is your means of getting everything out. Um, I have to look up what the name of this is called. But basically, this will take the resources, your silicon out, and then shoot it wherever it needs to go. So if you're missing, if you don't have enough space, and you want to don't have to run, don't want to run conveyor belts all over the place, you can just shoot this. However, that does give you extra power requirements, um, and a regular conveyor belts probably just fine. I think this would be a little bit more niche use. I'm going to give it a C. I probably would never use it um, unless I didn't have enough space or I needed to jump over a mountain or something like that. 
for a while, I should say. Not enough minor. Uh, awesome. Okay, moving on to the next one, we have the Silicon Crucible module. This one is actually fairly similar to mine. Um, in some of the, using the unload, I, well, this one's actually, okay. This one's not too bad. It's got your, I think you can put two of these in a row and they will pass resources to each other. Yep, they're going to the right here. So yeah, you can put two of these things by each other and they'll pass the resources as needed. Um, you should be able to put a couple of these in a row and then your silicon comes out the top. It heads off to the right. Um, yeah, I don't mind this one. I think the one challenge here is if you want to get more resources, your resources are going to have to come in from the left here, and then they'll go out to the right. The nice thing is that you just you just have to remember that your coal and your sand go to the top, and at the bottom, you just pass in your lead. So that's actually it's a kind of an elegant solution, I think. Um, I'm, I probably need to give this one a try. I'll go ahead and give that one a, an S tier. I, th I think that one has a lot of potential there um, for uh, feeding in. Granted, you probably could only get two of these in a row before it starts to get a little bit clogged. Um, but you, because of the size of the crucible, you can put one coal and two sand in there. And at least the first one would have enough resources. The second one probably, you might be able to get three in a row here, possibly. I'd have to think about that one. But yeah, not a bad one. Okay, moving on to the next one here, we've got the Silicon Crucible 3 core, um, or 3 core corner. So the idea is that you stick this, this container here attached to your core, it pulls out your resources, feeds it into these three um, pyrotite factories, and then feeds it into your crucibles, and then it feeds the silicon back in. So now if you need silicon, if you need a silicon really quickly off the bat, this is not a bad option. Um, you still have to give it power. And I think you would have problems with not enough capacity to unload all three of those. Because you only have two bridges from those two and one bridge here. You're going to run into a bottleneck in this bridge. And so not all three of these are going to be used, I think. I haven't run this one either. But I think that's going to be the problem. Uh, I do like the fact that you have this. Well, I guess you do have a um, uh, this item that speeds everything up. Uh, I can't remember that. Oh, sorry about that. But yeah, this this will speed up all of these, and that might actually make it fast enough to be able to unload all three. So this one, this one's probably okay. Um, I don't usually like to build off the core like this if for just making resources. I'll do this for making units. So I'll probably give this one an A. I probably wouldn't use it much, but it does have some good good elements that aren't, aren't too bad. Four volts out of five. All right, moving on to the next one. This next one is very similar to the, the design pattern that I've shown in the other two videos, or the other videos I made. Um, but this one goes with a six, or two by three pattern rather, so a total of six, rather than I doing, in my pattern I do two by two. So essentially, you can feed in resources at any point, and the silicon will filter out bo the bottom. Uh, the problem with this one is that you can't rotate it easily and put it next to the other designs. Granted, th this person made three versions of this, and so you could stick them next to each other uh, horizontally, I would say. I wouldn't want to start stacking them vertically because then it gets really tall and skinny. Um, so it's a good design, though I wouldn't do six. I would do two... Uh, because you're going to run into a problem where there's just not enough resources uh, getting across. So you have one unloader here. It has to go all the way up to this one unloader to be able to feed in there. So you're going to have to read, feed in resources from both sides. And with my design, you don't have to do that. Um, so this one, I'm probably going to give it an A. Uh, it's good, but it needs a, a couple more unloaders. Probably would have been better to use bridges. Let's go to the last one, which is my design here. Looks very familiar. You've seen it before. You've got your unloaders between the four uh, factories making si silicon here. Um, you've got a bridge that unloads it, and this underneath the bridge is the fourth unloader. That way, if you put resources in the right, you can put your coal in the right, your your sand in the left, and other sand in the top, and they will share resources among themselves. Uh, there's a right, a good enough ratio here that you won't have to worry about um, one or two of them just not having enough resources because of the bottleneck of the unloaders. 
and you can just your silicon out the bottom. You can tile these with because they're square. It's a great I, again. It's a it's a really functional, really easy to use design. Uh, I will say is one downside is that it does require silicon. Granted, you are making silicon from this, so uh, works pretty good in the campaign. I'm gonna give this one S tier. Sparking good schematic. So it looks like we got three S tiers this time. Only one uh, F tier and some other good designs. I'm gonna have to pull these out and and uh, give them a try. Uh, that's all I have for today.